So hello and welcome once again to New Junction. Right, it's been a bit of time since the last one, so it's time for some progress on the layout. Now, as you can see, I have a second tunnel portal. Now, waiting for me to build this has really stopped the next phase. Um, so the one that's in situ at the back there, that's the new one. This is the original, and believe it or not, this tunnel portal is half a centimetre further that way on that one. And that's all we were waiting for. So uh, now that's in, I can get rid of the first one and I can start mod rocking on the layout. So if I take a couple of steps back, you can quite clearly see now what I've done is I've put um, sl some spare Slater's plastic card in the gaps because this is a modular layout, basically so I don't cover the gaps with mod rock. Um, I could cover the gaps with mod rock and then just cut through them, but um, I find this, this method probably a bit simpler as long as I uh, butt up the mod rock to it. And before it's dry, I'll remove these and then um, in theory, I'll still have a modular layout at the end of it. So, time to get on with the mod rock. Here we are, wasting no time. As you can see, we've got the plaster bandage, or mod rock in this case, um, which I have cut using scissors into uh, handy slithers, which are, funnily enough, similar size to the tub, which I'm going to dip them into. Now, I always love this bit, because this is a really good excuse to have a takeaway. Not that I need any more excuses, but it's a good excuse. And then I've just borrowed the jug from the kitchen full of water and it's very simple it's a case of a bit of water in there mod rock in the water and then lay it on the scene and build it up and hopefully very soon we'll have a nice base on this side of the layout <laughs> So while I'm cracking on with the plaster bandage here, I just wanted to give a big shout out to Adam over at Rail Stuff. Um, he not only was able to acquire me some plaster bandage, I did actually find he was the cheapest and that I could find. I think at the time he was doing five rolls for about eight pounds, which is really good value. And you can find um, those plus more at rail-stuff.com and that is a non-affiliate link. Um, and of course, I'll put that in the description down below. It's the only problem being over six foot tall, I have to crouch. <laughs> right, so I've, I've talked to you for a minute just while I'm uh, doing this. One is because it, um, it's a nice distraction, so thank you very much. Um, the other one, of course, is I wanted to run you through my thought process as I'm doing this. Now, Obviously I've got the polystyrene base, so a lot of people might think um, there's no real need to go to the uh, added effort and expense of the um, plaster bandage. And in many ways you'd be absolutely right. Um, but I'm doing this, and I've always done this, because I want added strength. Now, doing things like this, in my mind anyway, um, will show its advantage in years to come because the mod rock just adds a layer of strength, a bit of knock-proof um, material to a layout, so that even if it's badly knocked, particularly at an exhibition, by members of the public and whatnot, it's not too damaged and it's not something which will hopefully not destroy the layout. So hopefully all this extra effort is worthwhile. <laughs> now for the seasoned modeler, this is, um, going to be nothing new, so I'm not trying to teach you how to suck eggs, but for anyone who's a beginner and contemplating scenery, it's quite a bit of fun because it's, uh, as I like to call it, messy modelling. It's very hands-on, which is always a good thing, and of course, it just binds a lot of the scenery together in the sense of any cracks and things in between the polystyrene, um, any undulations, it just smooths them out that bit more um, and it's just a nice way to finish off and seal the polystyrene in. So 
So I'm just coming to the uh, end of this phase for now. I'm going to leave the tunnel entrances um, just until I get them painted and lined up, but that won't take me long when the time comes. I think you'll agree this stage has been a long time coming and it does open the door to all the detail work, all the scenery, and that's the bit I'm really looking forward to. So I'm really glad to be finally at this stage. So with the last piece on for now, I'm gonna let this dry and then uh, come back and we'll uh, start working on the top layer. And of course, moment of truth, the reason why I stick the uh, plastic card in, hopefully that works. As you can see, there's always gonna be a gap, but it leaves a nice flush gap. Perfect for a modular layout. So I've come back a few days later, and as you can see, it's now rock solid. So this is just the first step. The next one for me, I'm going to use some sculptor mold. Now this is just, um, it feels like uh, mushed paper, and um, it forms plaster. And it's a sort of two to one mix with some water. And as you can see, I've got a little bit. And uh, you thought cutting polystyrene in an early episode was uh, messy. You're about to uh, really discover the meaning of the word for messy modeling. So what I'm gonna do is put in my plastic card um, dividers again into the gaps and then mix up some sculptor mold and then uh, just cover up, cover over the plaster bandage, as you can see all around here and it'll just smooth it out and again, just make it look a bit more natural. So we're aiming for a two to one mix uh, and I've been reliably informed that we want it to be the texture of sort of cottage cheese. Now, what texture that is, I have no idea. <laughs> so, just putting it in there, and as you can see, it's already uh, slopping about. Right, so we come to this a few days later and the uh, sculptor mould is now dry, so it's time to get rid of this snowy looking appearance and uh, give it a very base, base colour. For this I'm using some Hobbycraft acrylic paints, now these are just the very small cheap pots. The primary colour will be um, the brown, but I will be adding a tad of white and a tad of yellow just to uh, make it look a little more realistic and not so faecal in colour. So using the same bowl I had yesterday because uh, no expense spared with this build, um, the pro predominant colour is going to be the brown. I'm going to add a drop of white to lighten it up and then a tad of yellow. Now as you can see there is a tiny bit of water in this, now I want it to be um, a bit runnier than usual, just so it sort of washes over the plaster. And that's what we're sort of aiming for. Looks a bit more like hot chocolate than something else now. Right, let's get it on the layout.
So there we are, as you can see, the layout has been covered in the plaster bandage, sculptor mould and then painted. Apart from this top bit here, which um, I still need to uh, fix in position, but I'm not going to rush to that because that uh, gets in the way of the corners behind, so I'm leaving them loose for the time being. If we move on a bit further down, you can see the bridge section is now uh, blending in nicely. I'll turn you around. I think that's my favourite view. Right, so as you can see, it looks like the snow has thawed on the bulk of the layout. So if I bring you back down the layout, as you can see, my messy end. So the next step, I have sieved some soil in the garden and added some tile grout to it using a normal kitchen sieve um, and I've kept the fines. Now using a uh, Scenecraft accent shaker, I'm going to fill this um, using the trusty pot, as you can see there's a tiny bit of water in there, I'm going to add a bit of PVA glue and with a 50-50 mix I'm then going to sprinkle uh, the soil onto that as a next covering on all the, all the uh, places that need a covering. So, if I twiddle you around, an example of that, if I bring you here, so for example, um, this entire face will need a covering, the side here will, but of course this being a road, this won't need any. But uh, I'm going to just test a little patch and see how it looks first. Because uh, I'd hate to get this far and then commit to something that uh, <laughs> wasn't suitable. Right, so here we are. A couple of tips. I would always do small sections at a time. And like I'm doing, just test a patch before you commit and do the whole layout. One other advantage to mixing it in the same tub that you've uh, just been using to paint is the glue will take on any spare paint around the jar and uh, just brown it out ever so slightly. Now I'm just going to add... A tiny bit more because it's a tad too runny and then uh, here we go wish me luck so if I start on the camera sort of there now remember this is just yet again another base layer so the idea is ultimately you probably won't be able to see this covering in its entirety so I'm just going to test that tiny bit and then using the uh, accent shaker Make sure I get it on the right bit. And there we go. Now, as you can see, it just adds a nice level of texture and just takes it away from the sort of paint looking base. So I'm going to do a bit more now and we'll see how far I get with the fines that I've got and we'll see what it looks like. Right, so hopefully you'll agree, as far as uh, base layers go, going from uh, this, the painted plaster, to uh, this with the soil. Now, I know it's wet, so there's a bit of shine to it, um, but you can just see it's getting ever so slightly more realistic each step. And you can start, start to see where the road's going to go a bit more in detail. Now, obviously, this is very, very early stages still. Um, it's one of my favourite parts of this, is sort of building up the layers, because um, eventually... It makes the early layers almost pointless because you can't really see them. However, in time, like um, you see the gaps in the soil here, you can see the paint underneath. Um, each layer will have gaps and each layer will uh, let previous layers through and that just adds realism, just like the real thing.
So now I'm going to take advantage of the warm weather a bit more. Um, you can probably tell because I'm dripping right now um, and continue with the scenery layers. Um, and the best part, of course, again, is that the fact that they dry quickly. So you can uh, keep going with the progress. Right, onwards and upwards. If you would like to hit that like and subscribe button, that would be appreciated. It goes a long way. And of course, thank you very much to the channel patrons Yay! as ever. Oh, one other thing. I have been nominated for the Hornby Magazine YouTuber of the Year Award. Um, how strange. Um, I'm honoured for that. But if you'd like to check out the um, voting generally, um, there's a link in the description of this video. So uh, whoever wins that will be uh, well worthy, I'm sure. Right, I want to say bye for now. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll see you very soon in the next one. Bye for now.